hello students welcome to the srbps virtual classroom program i am your biology educator prerna rathi let us start today's class students today we will be starting with the unit 1 chapter 1 the living world it is something that you have already studied in class 9 so we are going to take it forward but before doing anything else we must learn what is biology now that you are pursuing biology as your main subject you need to know what is biology the term biology is derived from the greek word bios which means life and logia which means study of so biology is basically the study of life and living organism life can be defined as the property or quality of a living organism that distinguishes from dead or non living in some functions like what are those basic functions growth metabolism response to stimuli and reproduction let us consider them one by one characteristics of living things in order to be called living any organism must show these four characteristics it must show growth reproduction metabolism and response to stimuli what is growth it is an important characteristic feature of all living organisms growth is defined by the increase in mass and number non living objects also sometimes show growth like uh, mountains mountains grow taller and taller so they are growing they grow in mass by accumulation of material on its surface growth in living organisms on the other hand takes place by internal processes like cell division the mitotic division continues and leads to growth in size plants also show continuous growth throughout their life while animals show growth only up till a certain age in their life the next criteria is another important criteria that is reproduction all living beings produce their offspring that is young ones by the process of reproduction it is further divided into two categories the sexual reproduction asexual reproduction the lower forms of organisms like fungi reproduce asexually by the process of spore formation eastern hydra use budding planaria uses regeneration unicellular organisms like bacteria unicellular algae amoeba the the reproduction for them is synonymous to growth they increase in the number of cells the number of cells increases they are growing and reproducing understood the next phenomena that we need to discuss is metabolism all living organisms are made of chemicals there are certain chemicals belonging to various class size functions we have already done these chemicals in smaller classes carbohydrates fats proteins vitamins various minerals dna all these are your basic chemicals the chemicals within the living organisms are constantly being made and they are constantly being broken the sum total of all these reactions is known as metabolism metabolism is further characterized into anabolism and catabolism anabolism means making complex biomolecules from smaller ones आना दो छोटे आएंगे और एक बड़ा बनाएंगे नेक्स्ट इज कैटाबोलिज्म कैटा मीन्स काटना वेर अ लार्ज मॉलिक्यूल इज ब्रोकन डाउन इन टू टू और मोर स्मॉलर मॉलिक्यूल्स नेवर एवर विल अ नॉन लिविंग ऑब्जेक्ट एग्जिबिट एनी फॉर्म ऑफ मेटाबोलिज्म सो मेटाबोलिज्म इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट शॉर्ट शॉर्ट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स the next is response to external stimuli this is also called consciousness the living organisms always respond to their surrounding or environment the response to environmental stimuli can either be a physical response a chemical response or a biological response plant respond to external factors like presence of light presence of water the temperature that is existing other organisms present various pollutants organisms can sense and respond to the environmental cues of the environmental hints the condition of the environment is a stimuli for all living organisms to show responses photoperiod 
affects the reproduction in seasonal breeders we've already done that long day plants short day plants day neutral plants depending upon how much sunlight is required organisms can handle chemicals entering their bodies and be aware of their surroundings right now also you're using your senses you're using your earphones to listen to the sound and the brain is constantly reacting to it so this is basically a response to an external stimuli where the sound is an external stimuli human being the only organism which has self consciousness you know how to behave you know how to react you know how to respond to every change in your environment next let us discuss the diversity in the living world we had started this chapter primarily when we were in class 9 so basically in this unit we are going to do what we have done in class 9 in a little more detail let's start with the definition of biodiversity the varied life forms that are present around you on the earth are known as biodiversity next nomenclature what is nomenclature what we call in hindi namkaran जब भी हमारे यहाँ कोई बेबी होता है तो हम उसका क्या करते हैं नामकरण करते करते हैं वी कीप अ नेम फॉर दैट बेबी सिमिलरली इन साइंस आल्सो वेन एवर अ न्यू ऑर्गेनिज्म इज डिस्कवर्ड दैट ऑर्गेनिज्म इज नेम्ड बट दैट ऑर्गेनिज्म हैज़ टू बी नेम्ड अकॉर्डिंग टू सर्टेन रूल्स तो द सिस्टम ऑफ नेमिंग ऑफ ऑर्गेनिज्म इज नोन एज नॉमन क्लेचर देर आर मिलियंस ऑफ प्लांट एनिमल्स एंड अदर ऑर्गेनिज्म माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स प्रेजेंट ऑन दी अर्थ plants and animals are known in the local area by local names everything you know if if you go by name of a dog dogs are called by different uh, words in different languages these local names are they vary from place to place they are different in every region so it is impossible for any person to remember the names if you go to bangalore and say you know ye kutta hai they probably not understand because they have some other word in their language since there that is why you know there is a need for a uniform system of nomenclature for organisms like if you see 1 kg sugar in india is absolutely equal to 1 kg sugar in the us fine why because there are a certain rules of measurement similarly there are rules for nomenclature as well first step to nomenclature is identification we need to identify the identification is the process of assigning a pre existing taxon taxon is a category taxon is a category one ca- taxon name has to be given to each organism that is discovered basically nomenclature identification classification of various organisms is governed by two international organizations the ICBN and the ICZN ICBN is the international code for botanical nomenclature and ICZN is the international code for the zoological nomenclature one for the plants and other one for the animals what do you mean by binomial nomenclature binomial nomenclature should you what do you mean by binomial binomial means anything that has two terms The binomial nomenclature is, is a system of naming species by giving each name composed of two components where one is the generic name or the genus name and the other one is the specific epithet or the species name this system of nomenclature was given by sir carolus linnaeus he basically invented this system of nomenclature there are certain rules for nomenclature we've already done in class 9 let's quickly take a recap biological names are usually written in latin word and in italics font whenever you see the italics font that means it's the scientific or the biological name of an organism scientific name usually contains two parts the first word is the genus name and the spe- second one is the species or the specific epithet genus name always starts with a capital letter while the species name always start with a small letter biological names if they are printed if you know you get it in paper or in your books they are always printed in italics like you can see here in example but in case you are writing down in your notebook now that uh, many of us actually write in italics so it not be we would not be able to distinguish between that so you are supposed to underline when it is handwritten and the line has to be discontinuous for example if you are writing mangifera indica 
M capital I small and one line under Mangifera, another line under Indica. Mangifera Indica is the scientific name of mango. Homo sapiens, human beings, Oryza sativa, rice, Triticum astivum, wheat. Now, what is classification? What we have done is we have identified a organism. Mila, usse identify kiya. Next, what will you do? You will classify it. It is the process of grouping of organisms into specific categories based on easily observable characters. Easily observable characters. If I put together a nursery student and a class 12 student, and if I tell you that these are the two categories, one is nursery and one is class 12, just on the basis of seeing those two students, you would be able to distinguish. You will put the smaller one into the nursery group and the taller one into the class 12th group. So this is classification, dividing them into categories. What is a taxon? Taxon is a scientific term for any unit used in science for biological classification. A species is a taxon, a genus is a taxon. So basically one level, one category is called a taxon. What is taxonomy? Taxonomy is the science of defining groups of biological organisms on the basis of their shared characteristics. So all the organisms in one particular taxon will have similar characteristics that is why we have been classified into that taxon okay so Carolus Nenius is regarded as the father of taxonomy because he devised the system of naming things how is taxonomy done first characterization pehle dekh lo ke kya characters hume analyze karne second identification out of a bunch of organisms identify the characters that you have mentioned jo aapne apna standard liya hai what which organism has those particular characters after identification then do the classification divide them into separate groups and then do the nomenclature when you know that this is the particular class then in that particular class you can easily name that particular organism fine so what are taxonomic categories classification involves always a hierarchy like if you see in the school there is a hierarchy there are teachers there are there's principal there are directors there. so this is basically a hierarchy similarly taxonomy is also done in a hierarchical manner various steps of classification hierarchy are called the taxonomic characteristics each level in hierarchy represents an increase in the organizational complexity so as you go up the complexity is going to increase what do you mean by systematics another very important term the word systematic is derived from the latin term systema which means a proper arrangement a systematic arrangement of everything systematics is thus the study of diversification of living forms both the past ones and the present ones whatever is existing jo pehle kabhi mili hai ya jo ab mili hai according to their relationships fine Linnaeus used systema natura as the title of his publication when he published the binomial nomenclature and the method to uh, clare, uh, you know classify all this he published a book called the systema natura let us now see how these taxons are arranged the most basic and the smallest taxon the basic one is known as a species species is a group of individuals in which the individuals can interbreed among themselves they have similar characteristics and they can interbreed members of species have large number of common characteristics example mangifera indica so what is the species indica all mangifera indica would be same mangoes Solanum tuberosum. Tuberosum is the species name. Panthera leo. Leo is the species name and it is, it is the scientific name of lion. Now, a group of closely related species, when species will come together, they will form a genera. Fine. Example, potato, tomato, brinjal all belong to the same genus called solanum. Leo, pan, now Panthera Leo, Panthera Pardis, Panthera Tigris, that means lion, tiger and leopard, all of them belong to the genus Panthera. Can you see there are common characteristics between them? Next level is family. 
a group of closely related genera now genera will come together to form family we are going up in the hierarchy species genus and now family families are characterized on the basis of both their vegetative as well as their reproductive features for example three different gen genera solanum petunia and datura are placed in the family solanaceae what is the name of the family solanaceae so eae is used or ae is used behind the family name in animals panthera and felis panthera is all lions and felis all cat family belong to felidae so felidae is actually called the cat family next when these similar families or closely related families come together they form an order order and other higher taxonomic characteristics are identified on the basis of aggregates of characters mote mote characters you know plant families like convolvulaceae solanaceae are together in one order called the polemoniales in animals felidae and conchidae belong to the order carnivora now various related orders will come together to form a class it is a major category made up of one or more related orders that possess certain similar correlated characters for example class mammalia has a number of orders many orders are there in class mammalia carnivora rodentia primata insectivora etc depending upon which will possess mammary glands external ears hair on the body etc next phylum or division similar classes come together to form a phylum in plant kingdom we use the term division instead of phylum example of phylum vertebrata arthropoda annelida divisions are bryophyta thallophyta pteridophyta gymnospermae and angiospermae last kingdom all of these phyla combine to form similar phyla will always combine to form kingdom we know there are five kingdoms according to the five kingdom system monera protista fungi plantae and animalia the kingdom plantae comprises all the plants and the kingdom animalia has all the animals so the hierarchy goes kingdom phylum class order family genus species how will you learn it we have done a mnemonic for this already keep pots clean or family gets sick keep pots clean or family gets sick kingdom phylum class order family genus species then in your ncrt there has been there is a diagram uh, there is a flow chart that which discusses organisms with their different uh, taxonomic characteristics for example man the biological name is homo sapiens genus is homo family is hominidae order primata class chordata and phylum or division is mammalia phylum is mammalia for house fly the name is musca domestica genus musca family musidae order diptera class insecta phylum arthropoda mango biological name mangifera indica genus mangifera family anarchidacea order sapinidales class dicotyledonae phylum or sorry division in this case angiospermae another angiosperm has been discussed wheat biological name triticum astivum genus is triticum family is poaceae order is poales and it is a monocot so class is going to be monocotyledonae and the division again will be angiospermae i hope you all understood what i taught I suggest you all make complete use of the YouTube channel to enhance your learning. So until next time, goodbye, take care.